What is up? Welcome back to Softcore History. I am your host for the week, Rob Fox, joined as always by Dan Register and uh, prop, maybe the most special guest we've had. T- tied with the guy who was in Saving Private Ryan but didn't remember anything about being in Saving Private Ryan. Had no idea about the movie or the <laughs> events that took place. Max Martini, we love him. Great actor. You're but- also hyping up Kyle a little too much. All right. I w- I've been a host on his show before. I've been on his show y- before. You have. Too. Yeah. You have. <laughs> yes. Yeah. Uh, Kyle Banduho, uh, podcaster and newfound author, joining us today. How you doing, bud? I'm doing. I'm so excited to learn some shit. I was I was listening on the way up, learning about bleeding Kansas. Like I'm I'm really fucking. Oh, you psyched. Picked, picked a good episode to listen to because Rob got of, like me incredibly yeah, hyped. Yeah, the bleeding rage. bleeding Kansas, and then like the the Kansas. I, I I have a lot more context in the in the KU Mizzou rivalry now, so I, I feel pretty good about I, that. It's, you're making me angry just even thinking about it. <laughs> Uh, <laughs> I gotta get, I gotta get off that. Uh, but before we uh, we get into anything, you're here for two reasons. One, we're friends. But two, you got a new book coming out. I do. Movies with balls. I'm holding it up to camera if you're listening right now and not on our YouTube. Do you think you're better than us because you wrote a book? No, you honestly, should. like I feel, I I kind of feel like dumber than most people now because I'm like, man. You you read when you once you read back your own writing, like you guys have read back your own writing, and yeah. you're like. What is wrong with you? It, you know, I don't feel I never feel that way right away. In fact, if I read it back like a, a week later, I'm like, oh, sick. Good yeah. job. When, when you I send it, it back in, it's like still a hot. year later or something, then I'm like, especially comedy. Doesn't, I want to kill myself. Yeah. It doesn't yeah. translate. It's like when later. you when you turn in a draft to a book and then you get the like the hard copy in front of you. You're really proud for like a while. Like that feeling lasts a while. And then you start poking through the pages and you're like, I would have changed that. I would have changed that. Horrible choice. Yeah. yeah. Tough. Tough. But uh, yeah, Movies with Balls, the greatest sports films of all time, analyzed and illustrated. Me and my creative partner, Rick Bryson, uh, picked 26 of the greatest sports movies, greatest fictional sports movies of all time, and broke down- So uh, no Miracle. No Miracle, no League of Their Own, no Remember the Titans. I mean, uh, the League of Their Own was historical fiction. The The thing is, the genesis of the idea was Rick had created these, the, like, he was wondering what, like, the ticket to Rocky's fight against Drago would look like. Right. Things like that. And so the tickets that for happened. those... What are you t- talking about? Yeah, it's, it's true. It did happen. He did happen. He ended communism. He, 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 he tore, tore down, the, down wall. the wall himself. Yeah. Brick by brick with his bare fucking hands. Yeah. So it was like, if the ticket in some form or fashion existed in real life... We didn't touch it, and then uh, yeah, so it, that helped being able to eliminate when we were deciding like what to cover, being able to eliminate a, a lot of movies off the bat if they were based on a true story. But um, yeah, we we picked twenty six of our favorites and and broke down the movies why we loved them. Uh, with most movies, we broke down like the individual like the the big game or something that happens. With some movies, we had to get creative, like in uh, White Man Can't Jump. We broke down every single instance of them playing basketball. In uh, in the Sandlot, we broke down that Fourth of July game, and then we picked an MVP for each one. We uh, we discussed if if someone in that who some one person in that movie if they were good at their job or not. So yeah. Like, with dodgeball, did White Goodman have good lawyers? Survey says no. <laughs> no, no. Forced no. out extremely quickly. Yeah. Uh, the the company he founded. So, um, and, and then uh, you know a, a couple different categories. Uh, for, you know, for each one, we talked about some sports movie Hall of Fame cases. Uh, you know, ask some questions that need to be asked about a few movies, but um, yeah, you know, it's uh, What's a, what, what, what what name a question that needed to be asked about a if you can call off the top of your head question that needed to be asked. Um, you know, one I enjoyed. Have you guys seen Teen Wolf? The uh, yeah, 1985 oh yeah. Teen oh yeah. Wolf. So it, I I was asking questions. Coach Finstock gives um, gives uh, Michael J. Fox uh, some you know some some. Uh, p- three pieces of advice to live by. Yeah, and I kind of, I kind of broke those down, and, and one of them, I, I don't remember the top, like the exact wording, but it's like never cross a woman with like a dagger tattoo or something like that. <laughs> and I'm like, that seems like something. I, I was breaking down, you know, like, you know, why this is like such a crucial piece of advice, and that seems like something that's lived experience. Like he, yes. he gambled with it with a woman with like that kind of tattoo, like, and like lost. the writer did. Oh, yeah. the coach did. The coach yeah, did. Yeah, yeah, the coach yeah. did. Maybe the writer, the writer too, but yeah, to be honest, but that's, yeah, that's art imitates life but um yeah you know and like some other ones you know like the replacements we we asked like are we we rooting for the wrong thing in the replacements because like we're scabs we're rooting for scabs yeah like it's the replacements is a movie i love i love keanu in it i love gene hackman in it i love it every time it's on tbs i'm gonna watch it but it's like 
it's a very anti-labor movie. In that movie, there's a billionaire NFL owner who talks about the players running back to their mansions. It is, <laughs> yeah, uh, but I actually preferred the NFL season where we had replacement refs. Yes. I, better man, I forgot about the replacement ref season. It's chaos. It's like that was like the Hunger Games where the whole board just changes every 20 minutes. You know mm-hmm. what I mean? You just don't know what's going to happen. I like that we have our, our biggest league as a country, like our biggest sport. Our referees still have to, like a lot of them have day jobs. Well, I like that uh, cheerleaders make about minimum wage. If yeah. That, like, yeah. What is, what's the, rightfully what's so. the quote? They're, they're getting the, paid in exposure. Yeah. What's the quote in the Netflix show? Like a Chick-fil-A worker, one of them says. Oh, I was going to quote Kanye West and just say there's a thousand U's. There's only one of me. Oh, I mean, there's more than one of me. I'm basic as fuck. But there is a thousand of them, too. So, like, you know, whatever. It's a saturated hot chick. Saturated market, maybe. Yeah. I don't know, I, I don't know man. I was uh, I was watching the um, the DCC show and uh, some athletes. Like, I, oh, the I respect, like, They're incredible. Athletes. Incredible. Oh, yeah. Like, shit that would... I mean, I'm not a good athlete, but like shit that would shred my entire body just trying it one time. They have Although a lot of time commitments the as adult, well. The, uh, the NFL cheerleaders, they don't really do cheerleader shit. No. Like, not like the college chicks in no. high school. Like, they it's mostly, like a dance they, team. It's a dance team, basically. Yeah, it's not like the, the show, another, the cheer on Netflix. They don't, do, they don't do a lot of that. Like, I would, I mean, I would love, like, a, during, like, commercial breaks in the NFL, like, I want to see them do some incredible, like, tumbling oh. or stunt work. Like, the stuff that they're truly capable of. Like, cheering on the team, you got 80,000 drunk people for that. Like, right. I want to see, we're taking a break from the on-field athleticism. Like, I want to see some cheerleader athleticism. That, so, actually, one of my favorite sporting traditions of all time is every year at the Mizzou-Illinois game. Maybe they do this at other games, too. The Mizzou-Illinois basketball game, the Bragging Rights game, right before Christmas. During one of the TV timeouts, um, the cheer, each side's cheerleaders have a competition. It's five g- male cheerleaders of each side go out onto the court, and they lift five female cheerleaders and do the, like, one hand hold up or whatever. And um, last man standing wins. Oh, shit. And mm. when I tell you, that gets heated as fuck from the crowd. Like, it, there's nothing else in the world that matters for those, like, five minutes. To the point where I have watched them push TV t- push the TV timeout back because it's not But over. I prefer them navigating, like, an obese father who brings his also portly son... <laughs> To, and tries to get a photo with the cheerleader, but it's not for the kid. It's for it's for the dad to crank one out in the car. That's like the that's like the 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 cousin of the the photo with the kid at Hooters. Mm-hmm. Like yeah, gathering up. Same the guy. He has yeah. an entire photo album. <laughs> yeah, he's just the like one guy who and still has child and just like eight. Titties. He crops like, out the kid why, though, dude. He actually oh, like, crop it out. <laughs> just thumb over the kid as he's cranking it. Thumb over the kid's face. And you're going. He's got the the wallet like pictures, and they all come out, and it's just like <laughs> cheerleaders and waitresses at every restaurant chain. Yeah, I mean, I'm a Twin Peaks guy personally. Good queso. I was tilted kilt. I just had like a good sh- happy hour at UCF. I just like the shoot trivia night as well. Trivia night's fun, mm-hmm. always. Uh, all right, let's get into this week's episode. I actually, in honor of your book, uh, we are doing getting a little sportsy. Uh, however. It's not a book, or it's not a movie, I should say, uh, that you covered, although you're probably familiar with it because you are, uh, for the audience who doesn't know, a big baseball guy as well. Kyle uh, played college baseball. I wore this for you. I did my best, John Crook. I I appreciate it. It's a beautiful jersey. back my hair. The the Phillies throwbacks are undefeated. And you have, uh, you even played, you you were a pitcher and your battery mate ended up being a major leaguer. Yes, yeah, I'm Gattis. I was yeah, I was texting with him yesterday. He's doing doing well. Good, good. Skiing a lot. Skiing. Yeah, being re- being retired in your thirties would be sick. Yeah, that sounds pretty sweet. I mean, he played just long enough that he definitely made like enough money. Eight figures. Not, not going to re- reveal his finances, but Evan's fine. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I imagine <laughs> so. I mean, he played. Yeah, he he did well. I mean, I'm a Braves fan. I remember him. He was fucking great. He's the guy, he, nicest he actually, guy. He actually hit the best home run I've ever seen in my life. Which is, have you ever seen that home run? Did was, I say it, about was, that? was it the one off Cole Hamels where he golfed it like above his head and mm-hmm. hit it 495 feet? No, nah, I was in Miami. And he just Why'd hit. you bring that up? <laughs> Fuck. Was, Actually, great. that's not even his best Philly home run because though you're talking, I know the one you're talking about golfing it, but he also hit like a hundred mile an hour ball. I forget who it was from. That was like chin level, straight dead set. I mean, like an impossible. I think ball that. Ball. I think that was the, the. The. I think it was off Cole Hamels. Okay. But yeah. And then um, his uh, his first career home run, if we're just like trashing the Phillies right now, was Roy Halladay. Yeah. Which was pretty sick. R.I.P. Yeah, yeah. Way to fucking step all over a dead man's grave. Yeah, well, that ball and Roy Holiday's plane both crashed, crashed in the sea. Yeah, uh, 
But no, uh, he hit this home run in Miami, and you know, Adam not the Lytle. only Philly to die in a plane crash as well. What Lytle? Corey, Corey Lytle. Lytle. Yeah, but he gets out. Yankees shine. He did die. I in think New it York. happened in New York. Yeah, he, it did, and I think he was with it the Yankees. It wasn't long time. after nine eleven. Yeah, it, it was like it was oh no, we're getting attacked again. Yeah. Oh no, it's just Corey Lytle <laughs> crashes. Close enough. Plane. Planes crash into those buildings more often than you. There are too many athletes to fly planes, and I would not allow that in the contract. Not a no. It's it's hobby. It's second to like motorcycles, dude. I we said this on a, another show, uh, uh, one of our shows earlier, or something like that. I don't remember what. Would you like allow that. an athlete to fly you? No. no. Like right now, I can think of Mav McNeely, the golfer. He's oh yeah, he flies. He's himself, a pilot. Yeah. Flies himself to tournaments. Fuck that. I don't know if I would. No. I'd hop on. I no. want a pilot to fly me. Yes. Like a professional. Like have have train. I don't hung want over. Do you did a lot of coke before? Would you want? A hobbyist to do surgery on you? That's the thing. <laughs> I I don't want. I, like I'm just really into surgery, you guys. Hus- side hustles are like podcasts and blogs right. and like a, a Postmates route. It's not flying other people. Max, you can fly yourself. Maybe a lawyer. That's the highest I'll go. Somebody that practices law in their free time. A yeah. law hobbyist. Law hobbyist. Good luck. Passes Would the you bar. Do that? You're in a child custody battle. It's just your bro who's really into law. Fucking do it. If he passed the bar, I can why not? You. Yeah, I'll go pass the bar. My yeah, parents are lawyers. Dude, really I'll get you it. off your murder beat. He has passion for it. That's why. Oh, boy. Lawyers that are like 20, 30 years deep, they don't care. I, it's oh. just you're another number to that's them. What you, that's what you want. That's what I want out of my surgeon is just passionate competence. Yeah. Just like I plug I A into B, he's fixed, I'm out. He's got to want it. He's got to have the want to, <laughs> to, to fix my heart. Uh, but all right, we're doing a movie today. Uh, that is not in your book because it's based on a real story, um, but I'm sure you're familiar with it because you're a baseball guy. Eight Men Out. Oh, yeah. Let's so fucking go. We're not doing much of Eight Men Out, but we are focusing on a specific person from Eight Men Out um, who I think the film and the Black Sox scandal in general does a great disservice to because this is one of the greatest men in American history. Who was the actor? Uh, I don't remember his name, off the, but he's like, you've seen him in everything. He's a character actor. Uh, I'm talking about Arnold Rothstein. Oh, for yeah. The guy the legendary who gambler. A, allegedly fixed the World Series, legendary gambler. But that he's sold short because the Black Sox scandal is the most famous thing he was involved in. But what people don't realize is that Arnold Rothstein was also America's first drug kingpin. Yeah. Oh, I, yeah. Are you guys fans of Boardwalk Empire? Yes. Uh, he is in Boardwalk Empire. First couple yes. seasons, yeah. I, I believe that in the first season, it's, it's one of the seasons he's like trying to get away from the heat of the Black Sox scandal, like they're, yeah. they're referencing to it. Um, yeah, he's one of my favorite characters in Boardwalk Empire. Okay, perfect. I've caught many. I haven't uh, watched Boardwalk Empire like a ton, which is shocking for me. Um, but I, I am familiar with the Arnold Rothstein character that I've seen. Funny enough, YouTube videos of my it. TikTok algorithm of late has been sending me. I don't know if you guys on TikTok will get like there are people who would just post clips of, of, of shows. Like, yeah, oh, yeah. Just post hundreds of clips yep. from shows. And that's their TikTok. Yep. And uh, Which, I've been like, good for you. Yeah. I guess. Like, thank I, you. Well, it's nice of like I enjoy watching them. Yeah. It's like like we have kids like we're not going to finding the time to rewatch an episode of Boardwalk Empire sounds like a fucking chore. Like I Where am I going to get an hour? No, don't I don't have hours. I do have two minutes for someone who put a Boardwalk Empire clip on TikTok. So your spark note in the that's exactly that's that, exactly all it. kinds of shows. Exactly. Yeah. Or if it. I just want a happy reminder of like Deadwood, right? Yeah, I will never have time to watch an episode of Deadwood again for the rest of my life. I've yeah. only seen the movie. <laughs> the worst that's part. an interesting choice. Okay, this is the random movie they made because the creator had Alzheimer's and wanted to get one more. Just get paid, camp. dude. Yeah. I think he just wanted to make one more thing before he was incapable. But, yeah, so Arnold Rothstein, he's alleged to have been a major figure, perhaps the ringleader in fixing the 1919 World Series between the Chicago White Sox and the Reds, in which the White Sox and Shoeless Joe Jackson famously threw uh, the series, although Jackson's involvement is, has been even uh, up, as up in the air as Rothstein, more up in the air than oh, So they get a probably. bad rap, all right? Gambling is part of baseball. Part of sports. American is apple pie. Oh, Gambling. that's why. I, I don't know if I've ever talked about this with you in our DMs or whatever. <laughs> don't give a single fuck that the Astros cheated to win a World Series. Oh, me. I mean, I, I'm again, like my my friend Evan, like, yeah, got his World oh, Series yeah, ring in, right. in that yeah. year. Yeah. He, if 
the 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 first video I think that like John Boy posted, Evan is up. I think facing uh, facing the White Sox. And you hear and the boom, boom, the boom, 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 boom. Yeah, I mean it's that's baseball, baby. It's it's part of the game. Um, I and it's something that I think like not not to like not to go all in on like the Astros thing, but it was like something that that. I was told that Brian McCann, when he played for the Braves, yeah. was obsessive with switching up signs because he's like, people are watching, people are watching, yeah, people yeah, are yeah. watching. Like, you're either really good at it or you're not. Yeah. Like, everyone's trying to catch an edge. We just had, like, they just had to get rid of spider tack a couple years ago because people realized that, like, you could spin the ball like crazy if you used it. Right. And if they would have had spider tack when I was in college, like, I still probably wouldn't have been great, <laughs> but I would have fucking loved to try it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> like, give me a shot. Give me, Give least. me anything. Yeah. Yeah. It's I want to try, and I want the entire league to get back on greenies. That'd be I'm nice. I'm sure they're on amphetamines. I'm sure there's some form of amphetamines. Because you are allowed to take Adderall as long as you have mm. a prescription. Yeah, a couple guys have, have gotten popped mm-hmm. and suspended. Yeah, it's like the guys who can't figure out the prescription situation. Like I think, and, they, they, and they, they deserve it. Because Adam LaRoche One year Shane Victorino ADD. popped hot for Adderall. Chris Davis. Or no, it was Carlos remember, Ruiz. Remember did. Chris Davis? Mm-hmm. He of like 50-plus home run seasons. And, oh, yeah. And, and then he got the bag from the Orioles and... Could never hit above the Mendoza line. Didn't want Good to. for him. Good What's for him. What's the point? He's like Anthony Rendon. I He's love, I honestly love, like, Rendon, Chris Davis. I love when a guy gets a huge contract and sucks. Mm-hmm. Oh, Because I, lo- I love watching. It's the American like, dream. It's it's either that or that money sits, like, goes into a, a third yacht or just just sits in a, in a bank account somewhere. Yeah. <laughs> You know, for Chris Davis, I, I'm fine with him getting the contract because he seems fine. I'm sure he's fine. But, man, Anthony Rendon is a dick. He's doing everything possible to make people not like him. Oh, my Like, God. everything possible. <laughs> Come on, man. Like, just don't say anything. The, oh, God. I, but it's, it's not my whole life, okay? <laughs> it should be. Kyle Tucker is that way, too. Kyle Tucker's like, yeah, baseball's fine. It's like, just love it. You it's don't need to do it forever. More like, more guys who, need to lie and say they don't speak English. Like Anthony, Anthony Rendon, Rendon needs to like, be like, oh, I, I need a, need a translator. And it's like you're from Houston. Yeah, like we know <laughs> you fucking speak English, bro. <laughs> Otani should just pull the Otani. I don't. I'm not Boy. sure he'll give an on record quote ever again. Speaking of, uh, he clearly speaks gambling. English. He made Cameron oh, Brink did, yeah, just like Peter Pan's laughing. English. Yeah, he. I mean, he definitely speaks English. But like I. If I can, if I can just have someone speak for me, like yeah. I would, I'd be fine with Dude, it. Dude, there was one interview with Ronald Acuna Jr. because um, he always has the translator, and I'm sure his English isn't great yet. Who knows? But I maybe he's just doing it to fuck people. He always has a translator, and he's always just like, oh, blah, 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 and uh, you know, and then the translator says it or whatever, and they're like, okay, Ronald, thank you so much. You had a great game. Uh, can't wait to watch you again. And he just goes, like, like goes and looks right in the mic. And like, straight up goes, see ya. <laughs> like no accent, nothing. And or was like, see ya, thanks. Like just, I was like, what, what, what? Well, I like my baseball players to have a double life, like Bartolo Colon, where you have two families, maybe think, two accents. I think a lot of your more baseball players than you think have two families. Mm-hmm. Probably more, Jones. more Especially people the than you think have two <laughs> yeah, families. Yeah. See, it sounds horrible. Yeah, it sounds exhausting. like so like, much upkeep. It's one of those like nasty secrets of like when you when you get older, like when you're a kid, you kind of like assume the best of people and like you know for the most part, and then you get older and be like, yeah, people do have two families sometimes. Yeah. So it sounds like it. I kind of felt that way with cocaine. Everyone does cocaine. Yeah, yeah. I was like, oh, cocaine's a big bad drug, and then like the older I got, I was like, then you get in your twenties. Yeah, you you kind of thought Len Bias. You thought like Len Bias was the last person. It's like, oh, that that made everyone stop. Yeah, Len Bias, or at least Chris Farley. Yeah, what? Yeah, Len Len Bias is the one that I was hung. Like, I obviously I'm younger than before that happened, but that was always like the story to put fear into you. It's yes. like you'll end up like Len Bias. Len Bias did cocaine and died. Yes, and and then after that, after 1986, no one did cocaine that was anymore. The last year, no, everyone really. knows this. So Rothstein, like you said, in Boardwalk Empire, he was also um, the inspiration for Meyer Wolf Wolfsheim in The Great Gatsby. Yes, and allegedly. Him and his wife, uh, a showgirl named Carolyn Green, were the inspiration for the musical Guys and Dolls. That I didn't know. So Rothstein, kind of big in our nation's uh, cultural fabric, d- despite being such a lesser-known name. Uh, three major work. I get two major works of art, and then 
Boardwalk Empire is great too. Uh, and then also, obviously, uh, it's seriously impactful on the game of baseball. So, huge there. Uh, Rothstein, we're going to get into him now. He was born in 1882 in Manhattan to a pretty wealthy, uh, like middle class, upper middle class, uh, devout Jewish family. Uh, his father, Abraham Rothstein, was ironically known as Abe the Just. He was, oh. he was a businessman um, always, and was always, I guess, honest Abe. Sometimes taken, things so. skip generations. He, yeah, well, his brother, his older brother Harry, was studying to be a rabbi. So I guess Harry maybe turned out okay. Um, it's but, like when one sibling has all the athleticism, mm-hmm. like he had all the morality. Yes. Rothstein was good at stuff in his own right, but as a typical middle slash younger sibling, I don't, I didn't look to see if he had siblings younger than him, but he uh, he was jealous and always in need. Of attention uh his dad said that arnold was jealous of harry and would get upset when when arnold was not the center of attention over golden boy harry who's going to be a rabbi i mean a rabbi in a devout jewish family or a preacher in a devout christian family that's like i mean being a quarterback you know what i mean your debt for hank hill yeah like in <laughs> hank hill's family you know like it's just you're fucked if you're not that that guy yeah you, you get the the stature to live up to yeah but Ro- i guess rostein was jealous of his brother From the outset, because at one point, um, Arnold's father woke up and found Arnold, then a toddler, standing over Harry's bed holding a knife in the middle of the night. So, like, again, Rob, you have kids. Uh, Two toddlers currently, yeah. I'm not sure how you... Because, again, this is a different time. Like, if this happened now, it's like, okay therapy like we're gonna you know we're gonna get down to the bottom of this i feel like back then it was like we'll just put them in separate rooms and lock the doors (laughs) is that even fine possible i mean they had probably a decent flat i assume it's like a it's not a multi-story right it's an apartment or a flat yeah so but do they share a room what's i don't know what the situation is i imagine everyone back then shared the room it's everyone in the same room yeah it's a giant room i think everyone in the 1800s open floor plans yeah everyone in the 1800s all lived in the same room i mean entire families that did used to be a thing Mm -hmm. like in the middle ages whole families slept in the same bed quite often and then if you wanted to bang your wife you just you had a curtain that you pulled so the kids couldn't see oh the the bang curtain Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. okay in the frat house called them shag you'd have them wear like earmuffs (laughs) didn't even wasn't even a thing back then it wasn't for sound that, keep yeah. warm. It back, well, back then, it's like it's not like we're having sex. It's like we're creating another laborer for the estate. Mm-hmm. Like we're Pretty getting much. we're getting you guys a coworker. Yeah, like you want to you tie. We we're about to split this field into another eighth. Yeah, just for you. That's another chimney sweeper. <laughs> another way, <laughs> just more. We said this earlier. Another dusty boy. We said this on a different show. But we, you know, it's like yeah, it used to be you had kids, more kids to work the farm. Like, why do people have kids now? It's like people should have more kids now to work the content farm. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Monetize yeah, content. Mon- what, we need to get back to what we used to do, which is monetizing children. We yeah. Are. It all, uh, Balloon Boy's dad, not wrong. No. Not wrong. He saw the future. Early. He was just at the... Yeah. He was too early. The thing is, yeah, if that kid had been... If they had, like, done a, a TikTok live... I know the kid oh. wasn't in the balloon, but if they had found a way to do some sort of, like, live... You just set it up. Yeah. yeah come, I'm, I'm coming to you from inside the balloon. You build a little tinfoil hut in your house, mm-hmm. and that's what he's inside of. I don't know what that kid's doing now. I can't imagine it's good. I mean, yeah. David Blaine did the same thing, like, 10 years later, and he monetized it. I mean, he's a, live he's a content king. Yeah. But it, it's really like now every time you have a new baby, it's like, oh, that's a potential. That's multiple YouTube channels. Oh, mm-hmm. p- every single one. Yeah. It's if you're not doing that. Don't let them have a childhood. If you're not doing that, you're you're, you're, you're it's your fault. You're poor. Yeah. If I mean, look, look at look at baby Gronk's dad doing everything right. He's they're sur- they're going to have an incredible relationship. Honey Boo Boo's mom. Yeah. They're all going to have incredible relationships yes. when they're children and adults. They're not going to fight. ever. Mm-mm. There will be no emancipations, nothing like that. That's ooh. Xander Shoffley, now a two-time major champion. Why? His dad. Be- because his dad gave up coaching him, actually. <laughs> but until then. Until then. <laughs> <laughs> until then. Tua Tagovailoa. No, starting, see, I think- starting quarterback for the Miami Dolphins. What happened? Dad beat his ass all the time. Spanked constantly. Yes. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And two, two, two is one day. of the ones who's like, yeah, I'm better for it. He, uh, yeah. He's he's like, two yeah, two is into that. Uh, I wonder, see, Xander's dad, he should take a college football stature on it or like a college football position on it 
and say that Xander's new coach won with his guys. Oh, yeah. You know what I mean? My like, recruits. Oh, he won with my recruits. My yeah. recruits. Yeah. He actually won his first major when his dad wasn't there. <laughs> and his dad's a helicopter parent. How was he not there? Just chilling in Hawaii. Yeah. Fair enough. Yeah. Yeah. So, young Arnold also frequently got into trouble with his dad. Uh, again, devout uh, religious man because he loved – Arnold loved shooting dice. Arnold was actually – uh, may- and maybe this actually tracks with his um, sociopathic nature, but super gifted with numbers. Very, very good with numbers. Uh, did not care much for school, but was great with math and um, just figuring statistics and stuff out in his head. It's in the blood. It, is it? I guess. He's, yeah. he, none of them were accountants. It was a, a rabbi. I mean, his brother was a rabbi. His dad was a fucking. He's a businessman. Yeah. He's a businessman. I, an actually, entrepreneur? I think, what is that? Uh, no, I think I read he was in like linens or something like that. So nothing like crazy. I bet he found it on like the side of the street too. He's like, we're going to sell this. Right. Fell off like uh, the back of a wagon. Funny enough, that is how drug dealing used to be until Rothstein got involved. An innovator. Yes. Uh, so he was good at shooting dice which I think maybe got the little fucker the attention he craved. It's just always, you know, he wasn't getting it at home, but he was winning at dice. Everyone was patting him on the head. Well, there's no no better feeling than when you have a hot hand at a craps table. Uh, nothing. I mean. The whole casino's behind you. It's the it's the Because you're winning everyone. It's the way to make friends. Yeah, it's yeah. The, truly, it's the way to make friends in a casino. Because, like, in blackjack, no one, no one actually, you say, like, oh, yeah, give him a black, you know, the people at your table, you're like, yeah, you know, yeah. congrats, great, you, you just got a black, you don't really care, like, fuck off. Unless like, they fuck you. Congrats, Unless yeah. they fuck you. Yeah. You're like, <laughs> yeah. It, it, well, that's the thing, is someone, if someone fucks you on the blackjack table, they're your enemy, but if someone else is winning, you, you truly don't care. If someone right. is winning in craps, everyone's winning, so yes. that's right. the most popular person. Unless you're that dickhead that goes against the entire table. Yes, you're the don't pass line guy. Yeah. I don't want to do that. Be like, yeah! Be the villain. <laughs> yeah. Fuck it. Uh, in 1921, when asked how he became a gambler, Rothstein said, uh, I always gambled. I can't remember when I didn't. Maybe I gambled just to show my father he couldn't tell me what to do, but I don't think so. I think I gambled because I love the excitement. When I gambled, nothing else mattered. I can uh, relate. Yeah, I know you can. <laughs> I started reading lines. My dad got these little teasers when I was like five, and I taught my kindergarten teacher about NFL and college football lines so she can impress her boyfriend. And now she's a gambling addict. Probably. She's dead now. I fucking hate how Philadelphia that story is. <laughs> per capita, Delco has the most bookies in the area. That sounds right. It's not even a joke. It tracks. It's I know. True. I know it's not a joke. It's, it's also a- where a lot of NBA referees come from. You'll remember the not Tim a great, Not a great two things to be The Tim Donahue situation. Yeah. He went to Cardinal O'Hare. And there's a bunch of NBA refs that are like linked around him. I, it's just like that's that like are still being, in the league. That's like being like, yeah, did you? Fun, it's weird fact, but did you know that the most corrupt doctors and fentanyl dealers both come from the same county? <laughs> it's like bookies and NBA refs. That's so mm-hmm. just not. You can't have them that close together. Well, they still do. <laughs> yeah, but the the good thing is the league never gets accused of being rigged. So they especially the regular yeah, season, they really clean things up. I mean, look, how rigged it, it, either something can either be really, really rigged or not ri- like so comically unrigged when a guy like Nikola Jokic is just tearing up the league. Actually, I'll take you out of there because you, you work out a lot. I don't know what your situation is. Not but a guy often. who has probably comparable body to the two of us, height notwithstanding. Yeah. Being the best player in the NBA, it's not. It does not compute. Yeah. My little league baseball coach was actually tied in that ring. Shouts to Coach Beck. He in, went to prison. Oh, good for him. The Tim Donahue, Donahue situation, yeah. Tim, Coach Beck went to prison. So I bet was it was a lot of fun while it was happening, though. Oh, I bet. I bet it was really yeah. exciting. Did they make him give the money back? I guess. You yeah. got to find a way to hide it. Y- yeah. Find a shoebox. Do you think, like, the Rothsteins of the world, they would probably hate how gambling is today. They would hate how – I would think they would hate how mainstream it was. Like, if you went back in time – and showed him an app for whatever, like, your daily fantasy app of choices. Yeah. He'd probably be like, fuck this. Like, yeah, you're not working, I do. You're not working hard enough. I think Rothstein, based on what I've learned about him writing this, would actually be the, he all he cared about was more money. But I thought it made me special growing up, being able to gamble, like, through high school, college, now. But now it's oversaturated. And everyone has that vice. It's like, oh, man, I got 10 bucks on the game. It's like, bitch, I got, got my livelihood on it. <laughs> 
<laughs> now you're fighting for my today? fucking life. Uh, no, Ludwig finished second. He bogeyed a par five uh, and oh, yeah, lost he, by one. Yeah, he dunked it on the second shot. Yeah, and all shot he had to do it, was, yeah. if he just pars that, he forces the playoff with Keegan, and I could have won four grand. But here we are. That's tough. Here we are. Oh, just another Sunday. Just another Sunday where Danny's close, but no cigar. Well, you'll relate to this. Um, Rothstein loved gambling so much that he would pawn his dad's jewelry and... I've never done that. Mom, taking Dad, I know you're listening right now. I never stole from you. Taking advantage of his poor father's devout Judaism, he knew that his dad would not carry cash on him from the day the sun, or from when the sun set on Friday to the end of the Sabbath the next day. So Arnold would steal money from his wallet, like knowing he was not going to touch that wallet for a whole day, take it to go play craps, and he would so often win that he was able to replace the cash without anyone noticing. So his dad was bankrolling his gambling, and he without would, even knowing he it. would use the Sabbath yeah. essentially to to fuck him over. Not, I guess no harm, no foul there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. I, I, I got to shout money. out. I got to shout out one of my good buddies from high school, Matt, who had a similar predicament. He lost like a, a decent amount of money for like being a high schooler in online poker, and then uh, did the I'm gonna take my parents' money and win it back. Did not win it back. <laughs> <laughs> Listen, no family members. You can't steal from them. But girl, you're dating. <laughs> That purse is open. Just sitting Maybe there. Maybe reach in there. She's yeah. never going to know, because what if you win? You know? Man, I stole a lot of money from my little sister in high school uh, to buy booze, because she was like a babysitting uh, fucking titan of the of the neighborhood and babysitting. Have you yet? Your, your kids might not be old enough yet. Have you used cash that they have gotten yet? When you well, needed they've cash? Gotten, they've never gotten cash. So when like... You break t- their little piggy bank? To- tooth Fairy... Uh, you know, what's the gifts? going rate for tooth fairies now? Yeah, good question. Honestly, the the tough thing is inflation. Is it like five bucks now? No, for the tooth? tough thing is you never have cash. It's like yeah. I have had to give five dollars for fucking tooth before because it's like I don't have any cash. We do, we have five. one five dollar bill at the right. house. So that I mean, that's what kids are making out like like gangbusters because no one carries cash anymore. Because you don't want to break it. You don't want to. Well, it's like you. It's like I guess you have a twenty dollar bill now. You either remember. Uh, you either remember right before you go to bed Mm -hmm. or you remember at three o'clock in the morning and you're like, oh shit. You ever write your kid an IOU from the tooth fairy? Write him a check. No, uh, we did one time. The fuck has a checkbook? One time there was, uh, we, we completely blanked and then, and that next morning we're like, she might've had a lot of pickups. Like my, you, might, you might be in for you might How be in broken for hearted. Your kid's what, like eight, nine? He's ten He's now. 10, this, okay. I mean, this was a while ago. Yeah. Uh, it was old. just like she, it, you know, she she probably had a lot to do. Um, you lost your, you know, you lost your tooth really late in the night, you know, so she she might you not would, have yeah, might not have been. You might be Did on you buy that. Might yeah. You're on back right. order. I, I yeah. have a gullible child. For, uh, so all right, good, good. Yeah. So that I would and I would I would wish that on every parent. Have the most gullible child. You can get away with so much. See, my child. I feel like is, is well. You spin it. They believe in magic still, so yeah. they're yeah. creative. I my child is gullible. I think I think I can trick him into pretty much anything. But he's also a monster. He's indignant as yeah, fuck. That's tough. So like I could tell him, and he what would happen is he would buy that story and then just be like that bitch, fuck, mm. and that is still a problem. Yeah, but now it's, it's a different problem. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Yeah, 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 it's her problem. Yeah, yeah. it's exactly. It's Tooth Fairy's fault. It's not your fault. It is. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It really it wouldn't calm him down. It would just turn the rage somewhere else. Yeah. But I'd still do it. Yeah. I don't want to. I don't want him screaming at me. Yeah. It's not your fault. Yeah. No. As long as it's not your fault. Yeah. You know? Exactly. Yeah. So he's going to be mad at society, and I'm sure that'll that'll turn out well. well the in supply the chain. And that's when he's going to start stealing your money to go play craps. Yes. Yes. He'll be a deviant. Buy a gun. Uh, allegedly, mm-hmm. Rothstein took. Ro- allegedly, Rothstein wasn't even really into the games themselves. Just winning. Like he wasn't like either he had no great love for playing craps or or playing dice. He had he had he wa- he liked the excitement. Yeah, that's the Michael Jordan quote, right? I'm, mm-hmm. I don't have a gambling problem. I have a competition problem. Yeah, yeah. like it, it, it. Well, he had a money problem because he it wasn't even I think the competition. It was the end result. Like he liked getting the money, and he was a, allegedly so much cleverer with statistics and numbers and probability than certainly probably any other kid or teenager or young adult gambling in an alley or something that he was able to just clean out and eventually he went on to bigger and better things um and, and kind of got into more of a business uh got into the racetracks and stuff like that we'll get into that but in 1907 he fell in love with the aforementioned showgirl carolyn green 
Uh, but Green was only half Jewish and would not convert, so Arnold's father did not approve. Uh, Arnold didn't care, married her anyway, and was disavowed by his father. Um, but believe it or not, this love against all odds story was actually not that great. Arnold was not a great husband. I can imagine. I also like that the her not converting was why he why he didn't approve. Not that like she was a showgirl. Yeah, 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 yeah. He's <laughs> just like that's fine. Yeah, but she could wave whatever she wants at whoever she wants, but she'll be not on a Friday night. She won't. The classic story: the gambler and the showgirl. Uh, he Arnold. Uh, <laughs> speaking of that. I guess it wouldn't, wasn't going to be an issue anyway because he forbade Green from continuing to work in the theater as soon as they were married. Uh, he obviously, of course, also kept banging other chicks. Uh, That's the, the like 1907 version of you got to shut down your OnlyFans. Yeah, yeah. Uh, but I will still be jerking off to 20 OnlyFans. Yes, uh, yes. I will keep all my OnlyFans subscriptions. Uh, on the night of their I will we- be flying girls out from L.A. <laughs> <laughs> because we're, fr- it's mo- we're just friends. We're just a fan. I'm not going to fuck her. <laughs> I'm going to ask her if she was fucked, but don't, I won't do it. Uh, on the night of their wedding, he told her he needed to pawn her engagement ring to free up some funds. And she was like, okay, baby, and gave it to him. Uh, she was also not allowed to go out after 6 p.m., not allowed to be contacted by anyone. I guess he was the only source of communication. Um, he claimed it was because the police were constantly watching him, uh, which is probably might be true, except for he owns the cops, so who knows. Um, and he ordered her not to bob her hair because it would make her lose all dignity. Getting a bob back then was scandalous. It was a big fucking deal. Right? Getting a bob right now. I agree, <laughs> I agree with this, dude. <laughs> Fuck that. My lady gets a bob, it's over. <laughs> I have had my wife tell me multiple times that I'm, I'm not allowed to let her cut her hair short again. She's like, no matter what I say, no matter what ideas I get mm-hmm. in my head, you, will, you can never let me do that again. Yeah, but then if you bring that up, you're the bad guy. I She's going to try it again. I'm like, you told me not to. And she's going to be like, shut the fuck up. And I'm like, all right, whatever. I don't care. I do that with Rob with my beard. Because I'm like, I, I wonder if I have a jawline. You don't want to find out now? I don't want to yeah, find yeah, out. Yeah. Because oh. honestly, you know, even if you have a strong, like a fine, fine jawline, the beard removes all doubt. Mm-hmm. And, it's, and it's never going to be as good as you want it to be. No. Yeah. So anytime I bring up potentially shaving, I'm I have Rob slap me. You yeah, you you've got to assume that you have like Henry Cavill's jaw under there because mm-hmm. you don't you don't know for certain that you don't. Schrodinger's jaw. Yeah, it could be Henry Cavill's jaw. Yeah, it could be. But as, and as long as the beard's there, who knows? Yeah. Um. Also, <laughs> Arnold was not around very much because he was working constantly. He came home every morning around five or six in the morning from work or whatever, and he partook in his only addiction. Arnold was sober, didn't... Uh, well, I guess he was a gambling addict, but... Uh, yeah, it's kind of a vice. He didn't consider it an addiction. Uh, Is it an addiction if it's your job, though? At some point, it's not, yeah. Um, but he he didn't drink, didn't do the drugs he sold. Uh, he, he had one, or I guess two, things he was addicted to. He would come home at 6 in the morning and straight up Mitt Romney style chug quarts of milk and eat whole trays of cake in a frenzy. Listen, the cake, like I, I, I have a sweet, like I'm kind of here for that. Like that sounds great. Like getting home after a long night, just pounding cake, the milk, you've got to have an iron gut. The I milk s- just sounds like a high schooler trying to put on weight for football, but it's the worst way to do it. It you was also like nineteen twenty. Like you had so this nineteen twenty. You have no drinks. This you have like three things. Yeah, I drink. honestly think cold milk might have been a real yeah like, delicacy back then. Yeah, you have cold milk. You have water with God knows what in it. You have yeah. warm beer. And it was you probably have raw, right? Whiskey. Raw milk back then. Uh, when was pasteurization? Uh, well, actually, so when was it standardized? Team Gaines, dude. Nothing wrong with that. Pasteurization was standardized. Standardized. Uh, the first state to require pasteurization uh, was Illinois in 1908. 1924 is when it, I guess, became... So, no, it was raw. Y- it was probably raw, yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah. His like his stomach must have been made of fucking iron. If no, he's getting those probiotics. Chugging raw milk. But chugging okay. raw milk uh, and chasing cake with it. That's, that's not what you want. No. I hope they had indoor plumbing. I mean, it's... Not gonna clog. Nothing's getting clogged. It's no. also fresh <laughs> it's, cake. It's, it's thin. <laughs> it's it's coming. It's coming out of there. He's spraying. 
the cake's not lasting longer than a couple days. No, you got to eat it right away. Yeah. 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 It's fresh. Yeah. Uh, and they probably didn't have a, f- well, maybe they had a fridge. He's rich, so they had a fridge. I imagine they had a fridge. But an ice box. Put it in the ice box. Exactly. By, 20, by the age of 28, in 1910, Rothstein was already an illegitimate businessman, uh, at least in the eyes of the law. I don't necessarily, you know, he was into gambling and stuff like that. Uh, he moved to the Tenderloin District in Manhattan. This is where all the gambling houses, casinos, and brothels were at the time. Uh, and Rothstein opened a, a big casino in the area, raked in money. Along with his casino, he was super involved in horse racing, specifically at the Havre uh, de Gras, de Gras, de Gras. Uh, track in uh, Maryland uh, and it was alleged of course that he fixed races there constantly um, he essentially one of the things he was known for was leaving as little to chance as possible so in games of numerical chance he had a good mind for it in stuff like horse racing or maybe the 1919 World Series uh, he essentially would fix things or get as much every bit of inside information as possible. So, and a good example of that would be, maybe he doesn't fix a match, but if you recall the greatest gambling scandal in recent American history, which is the Alabama baseball oh my scandal. Oh, fucking incredible. Where the guy had his, his bag man go bet at the Reds stadium because they had legalized in Ohio, yeah. casino in this, or legalized betting in Was the that stadium. A, just a regular yeah. Cincinnati Reds game and put a hefty portion of money on an alabama baseball game alabama friday night baseball game i that's believe gonna catch the eye yeah i believe he was like being very vocal about having information he literally go they're like wow sir there's something like wow sir that's a lot of money and he was like oh yeah i got the inside track i know the coach and he said the pitcher's injured but they don't know the books don't know it yet so i'm just yeah you told me to put down this money we're gonna split it that's the thing about like gambling. it was like literally he confessed if i'm the not crime if i'm not mistaken they were playing against paul skeens too. Oh really? I think I think it was the I think it was a game against LSU against Paul Skeens. Hell yeah. Yeah. And when you do gamble, there's a hefty portion that don't really care whether or not you win the money. It's more about the clout and what comes with the win. Being able to vocalize it to everyone around you. Oh yeah. Yeah. I know things. Yeah. The least important things on earth. I know them. <laughs> Sports. <laughs> like what oh wow, dude, you picked a college football game, right? Yeah. Dudes Fucking genius. Dudes. That's kind of the hierarchy and how we judge each other on a social status is our knowledge on sports. I So one thing that's funny, and I think kind of sports helps train. I think male brains are like this in, in general, but I think sports either proves it or helps train us on it. Is I, I read a statistic the other day that even though women are, are better in school, like undoubtedly they're better, in, better at school and um, are getting more education than men, men still do better on most general knowledge tests for whatever reason like if you just give a general knowledge test men on average score score obviously you know any individual could be however dumb or smart or good at general knowledge but um i'm, I'm kind of wondering if that's because we spend a shit ton of time on like wikipedia deep dives i think that's not a thing chicks do yeah like i think they're probably using their time more efficiently <laughs> Where I'm like, well, I mm, Wikipedia like we we both waste time in our own special yeah. dumb way. Well, I'm looking like I'm looking up. Hey, was this actor in this movie? And then 45 minutes later, I'm reading like something about like the Sri Lankan revolution. I don't even oh, know yeah. if there was one, but like that's how that's how you know. Right. And then oh, suddenly yeah. you have all this knowledge. But I mean, they're still pretty you know plugged in with the pop culture for the most part. Yeah, they yeah. they consume their own. Like we consume sports. They consume whatever Chapel Roan's talking about. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like it's, yeah, it's, yeah, but it was, that was funny to me. I was like, man, I just feel like maybe, cause it's not useful. Like to just have random trivia. It's no no more useful than being, it's not more useful than being a responsible person. You know what it is, Rob? (laughs) Ladies be shopping. Bitches be shopping. (laughs) We're, We're at home getting that knowledge, reading those wikis. They're spending our money. We're naming some guys. We're na- I we're, love naming guys. I, no, everyone. Who doesn't love naming guys? Everyone loves naming We've guys. already done that like four times on this show. You named you named a guy a minute ago. You're like, oh, Paul Skeens was actually yeah. in that fucking. Paul Skeens. We were talking about Evan Gaddis and fuck knows what else. No, but I mean, we love naming like guys from our childhood, from our teenage years. Yeah. yeah. I mean, like, you ever, like once a week, I wonder what Pat Burrell's doing. Dude. He burled your girl. That's what he did. <laughs> yeah, that's true. Your girl, your mom, your aunt, your cousin. All 35% of the greater Philadelphia area are children of Pat Burrell. 
I believe it. Like, fully believe that. That P stands for Pat Jr. I still think his, the best version of him was on the Giants, but that's just not true. <laughs> nah, man, walking out in that gimp suit in the locker room. My dad hated Pat Burrell so much. Why? Because he struck out a bunch. He was ahead of his time. He was. Like, truly, he'd be more appreciated today. Most likely, yeah. Yeah. And he, like, had a severe ankle injury in college, so he was a terrible fielder. Because he never recovered from that. Was he a left fielder? Mm-hmm. Mostly, mm-hmm. yeah. I got to uh, I got to interview his college coach, legendary Jim Morris, at the uh, University of Miami. And it's another guy, another guy, and uh, he he recalled like you know you have the you have that fall as a freshman season kind of figure out who's going to start, and he was like Pat's first BP, penciled him into the four hole, just the sound of the bat, sound of the bat, Pat yeah. the bat man. I'll name a guy right now. My favorite closer growing up, Eric Gagne. Oh, the goggles. It wasn't even your guy. I know, but I just loved it. I loved. Uh, Smoltz Just the better. energy. <laughs> Smoltz was better. Smoltz was really good, I know. The, He's uh, also a world-class golfer now. The uh, wor- Worthwhile on YouTube going to watch the, the Gagne v. Bonds oh, matchup. Yeah. So good. Yeah, yeah. Gagne was, was nuts. Uh, by the age of 30, Arnold Rothstein was a millionaire. By 1919, he was well-known for his money and his gambling success, uh, though he insisted it was all legit. Uh, I kind of think in a lot of ways – I know Biff Tannen was based on Donald Trump in terms of like look and maybe personality or like Biff Tannen in Back to the Future too. Right? Yeah. Yeah. Uh, but I, it really the in terms of like not like Biff Tan Arnold Ross, Rothstein is Biff Tannen in terms of like using any inside knowledge possible to make a ton of money and run illicit casinos and and have an actual crime ring. Yeah. I mean, I we would all if. I think everyone relates more to Biff than they do to Marty, truly. <laughs> like we would use we would take that book back. For oh, yeah. sure. Oh yeah. For sure. You can't and I would obvious. never make out with my mom. Who's never. the real villain? That's that's exactly it. <laughs> yeah. Mulaney's bit on Back to the Future is just all time. Oh yeah. This is the best. Oh, he's gonna stop the Kennedy session. <laughs> well, oh. now I feel stupid. <laughs> uh so comes the World Series, 1919. Rothstein, of course, insists he's no part in throwing the World Series. In fact, in 1921, a jury found that White Sox players accused of throwing the World Series were not guilty. So there's no proof that – there's technically no – it's never been proven beyond a reasonable doubt in the court of law that the World Series was thrown. They were ba- – in fact, after they were found not guilty, hmm. it was then that baseball banned them because they were like, fuck this, we know they did it. Got to do something. Yeah. So was the World Series even thrown? Do you, what do you think? I think it probably wasn't thrown on the level that it's alleged it was thrown and as deep. Yeah. But I, I, I think there were, you know, some, some guys probably like, yeah, threw it. But, I mean, they took it to it, – World it Series was nine, was nine game. games. Yeah. I think they took it to eight games. They did, yeah. Which is like if you're throwing – that's a pretty good job of throwing something. You don't like, want – That's a get, really like, good job. Can you imagine if you're a gambler and you have fixed the World Series today and it goes to game six? You're shitting your pants. Oh, you're in hell. Yeah. You're in hell. Yeah. I mean, it takes, like, serious talent. Like, honestly, if a, if a gambler was trying to, like, approach my college team, my Division two college team, and they decided, like, hey, we want to – they probably wouldn't even come to me. They're like, you can't do anything for us. <laughs> like, just be you. We're not confident <laughs> you could locate a pitch, yeah. good or bad. It just, just be you, buddy. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so, regardless, Rothstein was named by some and was called in to testify, including some players. So he testified in front of a grand jury. Rothstein, for what it's worth, said that the series was fixed – but not by him. And his quote on this was, the whole thing was started by A. Battelle. I'm going to use my old-timey voice for this, of course. The mm-hmm. mayor voice. Uh, and some other cheap gamblers decided to frame the series and make a killing. The world knows I was asked in on the deal, and my friends know how I turned it down flat. I don't doubt that Attell used my name to put it over. That's been done by smarter men than Abe. But I was not in on it, and I would not have gone into it any, under any circumstance and did not bet a cent on the series after I found out what was underway. That, so, ma- that makes me think he did it more. <laughs> I, at the very least, there's no way he didn't gamble on it if he knew it was fixed. For sure. Him saying I didn't put a cent on the series, like, absolutely not. I won't so, bet on anything that's not on the up and up. Yeah. That's literally, we know that's a Nobody lie. actually accused him at first. 
he just brought it up himself. And like, oh, that's a weird thing to say. Yeah. Well, it's like, again, if you're a professional gambler, there's so little to bet on. Like, there's there's far less than there is now. Like, mm. you've got you've got the World Series, which at that time was You think of, like, important. national stuff. There are a million horse races. The, horse racing is the second biggest sport in the country at this that's point. That's a good point. Pedestrian and boxing still going is, strong. There's a million but dudes like, are walking. boxing matches. We got it's, dudes walking, all right? And they're gambling <laughs> on it. Just speed walking. And what's funny is I feel like two of the three sports – that we're talking about, you know, baseball fought gambling off as hard as it could mm-hmm. and stayed around. Boxing didn't. Guys used to box all the time. Boxing yeah. didn't and is dead. You had to yeah. fight every other week. Oh, yeah. And then horse just racing. Tomato can after tomato can. Horse racing just walked through the portal and was like, we are, our sport, the whole point of our sport is gambling. Yeah. Like, there I mean, is no other, there is no that, That's glory. why, it's why it exists. Yeah. Dan, did, did you gamble in the Olympics? Oh, yeah. How'd that go? Well, I had Lydia Ko. Oh, nice. To win the gold medal. Nice. She had a good I day I also today. had Lydia Ko today to win the British Open, so Dana, that was cool. Yeah, good day for you. It almost. Well, it almost. saved me. It oh. saved me. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't have to pay out. A lot of times, Dan's victories are not drowning. <laughs> you know what I mean? It's pulling yourself out. Finding a raft. Quicksand. Yeah. <laughs> Finding a floating door. But no, man. Like, you need to essentially... You need to only bet like you're already down two thousand dollars. Yes, right. You <laughs> that's when I'm at my best. Yeah, <laughs> is being able to pull things out of my ass. You need to be more desperate. It's pressure. It's the same thing in basketball. I could be like zero for ten in a game. I'm hitting the game winning shot. Like, I never missed. Maybe you just need to take out like a really high interest loan and just bet. It I just did that. Like, bet it, to it was fix called that. 2019. <laughs> I maxed out all my credit cards. Bought a shit ton of like film equipment, audio equipment. Went all in on myself, and here we are. That's not what he's talking about. Not, do we really need a grind speech right now? Uh, no, I'm saying I got sued by Discover. That's, oh, what, yeah, that's yeah. what ended up happening. Yeah, because <laughs> <laughs> sometimes when you pay a credit, when you pay a company to c- consolidate your debt, they don't do it. They don't do it. They just tell you they did. That's tough. That's that's good. That's good advice. Yeah, be on the lookout. Yeah. So uh, you ever try to consolidate your debt? Don't. <laughs> 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 Just don't pay it. Just don't do it. <laughs> um, so Michael Alexander, a different uh, historian, he essentially thinks that Attell, Abe Attell, the gambler, fixed the series um, not with Rothstein's approval, uh, but Rothstein then bet on it, knowing that it was fixed. Which, um, like, a, we a number would of, all do that. And what's interesting about this, though, that's probably more um, – evidence that Rothstein was involved in the fix is that in like a deposition or whatever uh, or testimony delivered to the grand jury a number of White Sox players were like yes it was fixed yes this uh, provided details all of that written record because it's only written at that point only written there's no video uh, there's no audio it is written down by court reporters all of that disappeared and then when they during the actual trial, none of them would testify again, and they all took the fifth. It's a way to do it. Yeah. Uh, but enough about the Black Sox scandal, because that's not what he's great for. Rothstein is so much more than that. In 1920, Prohibition begins, and Rothstein has a new fun revenue stream, and that is illegal booze. He became the biggest bootlegger in the United States mm. overnight. He faded the government. Yes. Oh, well, constantly. This man was how alcohol got into the United States, specifically through Canada in the Northeast. So, like, there's a scene, I mm-hmm. think, in... Um, he actually like, started NASCAR. That's kind of how NASCAR started, right? With stock cars, yeah, bootlickers. Yeah. Uh, he, so, might, he indirectly started one he of the huge that, sports in the city. That's like the, dom- the domino, you know, the domino meme. It's like the start is, like, Prohibition starts, yeah. and, like, Dale Earnhardt crashes at the... <laughs> <laughs> he killed Dale Earnhardt. He killed Dale Earnhardt. <laughs> he made a right turn. The, gover- the, the government killed Dale Earnhardt by, uh, by uh, making prohibition. Yeah, the yeah. Constitution killed Dale Earnhardt. The Constitution Earnhardt. killed Dale Earnhardt. Yeah. Uh, he became uh, the biggest bootlegger, like I said. He also bought a bunch of speakeasies. I mean, this guy, he was very good, very great business acumen about knowing what was going to be hot. He was specifically in on scotch whiskey because he knew that um, having, like, nice booze was going to be like like you were you were like elite top tier if you had nice booze in your house when booze was banned in America think of like like even if uh you know cocaine is a scary drug or whatever if someone you trust deeply is like look 
No, you don't do cocaine. But I have, I can assure you, this is the purest coke of all time. I watched it be made. It is incredible. I got it from the jungle. Yeah, would you like a key bump? This is jungle cocaine. Look, I'm gonna gonna do it. It's just how it is. It's just my friend. I'm gonna fucking. I'm not. You know, like obviously that's different than a bathroom bump at you know three in the morning from a stranger. Like (laughs) park park coke. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Exactly. (laughs) Uh, So Rothstein was also responsible. So Rothstein did all this. He saw booze going off, and he was like, "People like getting fucked up," which leads me to believe they might like getting really, 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 really fucked up. Maybe. So he was like, booze is one thing, but I'm going to start bringing in drugs. And this man was responsible for the, I don't know how to put this, the industrialization and like widespread capitalismization of the drug market in the United States. He started bringing over cocaine and heroin in huge quantities from Europe where it was still legal to manufacture and stuff like that at the time. I mean, this was like borderline medicinal still mm-hmm. in the in the early 20s. Um, but he made it fun. Yeah. He, he kind of. I mean, an innovator, though. If he, if, like, if he made the drug industry what it is, again, that little domino, you can, you can yeah. see so, like, Arnold Rothstein, Josh Hamilton at the 2008 Home Run <laughs> Derby. <laughs> Josh Hamilton underthrown a fan, and that guy cu- like falling to his death. <laughs> That's tough. Arnold Rothstein <laughs> butterfly affected that man's death into existence. In a, it's, I mean, you can draw. You can people draw forget track, that track, Josh Hamilton underthrew that man. Uh, <laughs> I mean, people remember. Yeah, there's a statue outside. There's definitely a statue a, of it. Is there? No, I think of the fan. Yeah, the fan and his son. I think there's a statue outside. Yeah, they removed the, uh, the Hamilton statue at the yeah, old stadium. I can't remember if it's at the old stadium or the new stadium, but I believe there is a statue of, of the man who died and his child oh, at the yeah. That's rough. Yeah. They, they I don't are, think have you been to those stadiums? I, I haven't been to the new one yet. I have uh, the old one, yes. It's literally across the small street. Yeah. I've seen I've seen it. Look yeah. the, the big barbecue grill. Still I just still I just have not taken in a game. Globe life's fine. Yeah. It's fine. The old one was beautiful, it was just a furnace. <sighs> beautiful horrible. stadium. Horrible. Uh, yeah, beautiful statement. Be- oh my god. The hottest place on earth. What is oh. Hamilton doing these days? Is he off the wagon? I, he on has the wagon? been on and off again. I think. He's been very quiet too. Um, too quiet. The news. The news on him has not been strong. No. His career. No. Yeah. Um, yeah, it hasn't been. The Lord didn't work. Well, he might come back around. Yeah, you know, for a bit it did. Okay. Comes and goes. It's like a band aid. Look, sometimes it. <laughs> When Jesus carries you, you have to want to be carried, okay? When there's one set of footprints on the beach, mm-hmm. you have to consent to the carry. That 08 season was fucking sick, though. Oh, it was awesome. Like, the too. best. The home run derby? Home well, run derby. You I remember mean, who won that home run derby? Ooh, another dude. Another uh, Jay? It was a first baseman for the Twins. Yeah. It was Twins uh, legend? Monroe? Morneau. 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 Oh, yeah. boy. What could have been with those teams? <laughs> Don't this is why... This is why I kind of like I'm getting like very out on not out on baseball because I still love baseball, but it's just like like the Braves are in the middle of like a win win winning window. They already have one. Yeah, World you Series, got one though. But like, but it's they're so good that it's like okay, I want more than one because I've already lived that life. I just I couldn't have less sympathy. For I know. I just couldn't. I know. Couldn't have less. I know. But it's we're in dynasty mode. All right. But it is this type of thing. It's like it doesn't like. No, you guys blow. You're not making the playoffs. Could possibly off. be, and then just don't win and don't win. Same as Mizzou. You're not going to make the playoffs this year. You your life keep is going to be evil a out of your fucking constant mouth. disappointment. Mm-hmm. Goddamn, G six team or G four, dude. <laughs> no, you're P. You think you're P four, but really you're G seven. That's what nah. it is. G seven. We win the Big Twelve. We're in. <sighs> That's, That's our. We got a path. That's good. I know. You know it makes me want to puke. Yeah. Um, so he began importing from Europe, having them like, I mean, he was take, placing full like orders from factories, right? It, the drug trade before that, as I mentioned earlier, was basically just like small time street dealers would steal their shit from hospitals, from uh, trains and wagons, stuff like that. Maybe they would place like medium sized orders from Canada, but like nothing that would be sufficient to more than like a small gang. To deal you know what i mean like mm-hmm. this is pablo escobar shit like he is the first pablo escobar in north america this was he got- into exotic animals no sadly he didn't have time for it dude we if he had been we could have hippo there could be hippos running all over the oh Northeast. we already discussed there should be hippos in new orleans uh they they tried there was a brief plan when there was a beef shortage at some point to in eat the, around the same time 
um, maybe a little earlier, to um, populate New Orleans, I'm sorry, uh, Louisiana's swamps with hippos, and we would harvest their meat. It's apparently really good. I've seen too many cute videos of Fiona the hippo from the Cincinnati Zoo. Especially, I, I don't know if I'd be into eating a hippo. They're also We're responsible for the most. Veal. They're responsible for the most deaths in the world. Oh, extremely dangerous yeah. hippos! Like, oh, I yeah. get it. New yeah. Orleans, Louisiana, and to- like that's a total avoid area if there's hippos. But like watching a grown hippo eat a watermelon at a zoo brings me a lot of joy. Mm-hmm. I just think about how that could be my skull, and I'm like, I'll eat you first. I would try a hippo steak. Feels blood. Bur- feel- burger I- chain with like hippo meat. I'd eat it once. Didn't you say it was like marbled venison? Which sounds kind of dope. Yeah, yeah. I mean, it depends. Dude, some oily meat. Like, have you guys e- ever eaten goose? Yeah. I've it's never bad. eaten goose. It yeah. sucked. That's it was fine. so fucking oily. I would assume that, like, on billionaire yachts, you could probably get, like, a hippo steak. Oh, yeah. I want something more endangered. Maybe that's why the right. whales are coming after him. Oh, what whales? Like solidarity? Yeah, well, the whales that are left, yeah. Yeah, solidarity? I don't know. Um, Listen, I'll, I'll try almost anything once. Like I, I take it back. Oh yeah, I would yeah. try once if it's already dead. You know what I mean? I need a dolphin yeah. sausage. Like, I didn't kill it. Yeah, human. I would not do that. I would not do that. Okay, so, so but you no, guys are fucking liars. Was, even if it was consensual, because like there's a story one time about how a dude he had to have his foot severed, and he cooked his foot for his friend. Made him tacos. And there's no fucking way. I'll yeah, no. I th- I mean, obviously, there's like the desperate time, the Donner Party, right? Uh, that. The flight, the the Brazilian soccer team or whatever, Uruguayan, I think Uruguayan, Uruguayan. yeah, 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 that one. Um, You know, desperate times, desperate measures, but do what you have to. Yeah, and then um, oh, the other one, the other only other way you could eat a human where it's like semi kosher is uh, uh, like a placenta. I mean, would you eat some placenta calamari? I'm gonna pass. (laughs) (laughs) It's gonna be a hard pass. Yeah, I would. I get stem cells from it, right? Probably not after it's bread and deep fried and dipped in aioli, but, <laughs> but who knows? I would still eat it, yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Uh, so Rothstein was, again, loved attention. Uh, that never went away. He would actually, once he became this big and this famous, he would invite journalists to write about him and his, wh- everything he was doing. And uh, he didn't worry about the police reading it because he owned the cops in New York. He uh, There was... He was n- there was no no one who could get him in trouble. He was essentially, not only was he the first cartel drug dealer in the Americas, maybe anywhere, he was essentially one of the, maybe even the George Washington on the Mount Rushmore of founding fathers of modern organized crime. This man invented or co-invented Everything you think about when you think about 20th century organized crime, the Godfather, anything like that, even like Breaking Bad, like the cartels and stuff and that. Did he have his own Tommy gun? He didn't. No, he didn't fuck with that. He didn't need to. I mean, he killed. He had people killed, but he didn't kill anyone. Okay. Never took a life. This man, he. Did he talk like a 1920s gangster? What? Did he talk like a 1920s gangster? Yeah, we'll get to that. Yeah, see? Yeah, yeah we'll, see. we'll get to that. He did. 100% he did. So when you're talking about the journalists, like, I, all I see him is, like, being swarmed by all these reporters, you know. So he held court. Hey, babe. He held court on the street. Yeah. Essentially. And, yeah, reporters come on and be like, hey, Rostin, got any good tips today? You fixed any races today? And he'd be like, hey, I don't know what you're talking about. I'm all on the up and up. But, hey, maybe you should bet uh, Pharaoh's charm and see how it goes. <laughs> yeah, like it's like that type of like winky bullshit. Mm-hmm. Essentially, he actually we'll get to it, but he held court outside of a deli in New Lub- uh, I will get. It. I can't remember that way, but held court outside of a deli, a famous deli in New York. So he again needed attention, wanted credit for being such a uh, big shot or whatever. Um, he essentially. By the mid 1920s, had like I said, uh, he controlled the entire heroin and cocaine uh, trade on the Eastern Seaboard. He invented uh, modern organized crime as we know it. He owned the police so much that at one point, two detectives broke into one of his illegal dens, did not knowing he was there. He shot at them, suspecting they were robbers, didn't know who they were, even though they were cops. The judge dismissed the case. Judges were in his pockets, too. And a journalist wrote in one of the New York papers, a little pist- pistol practice with policemen as targets. Or, or he wrote, what's a little poli- pistol practice with policemen as targets when you're Arnold Rothstein? Like, you're allowed to shoot at cops when you're Arnold Rothstein. Uh, one day, he even met with uh, a one of the richest guys in Europe in a hotel. This guy was so rich that when the Germans 
uh, conquered Belgium in World War One. He uh, allegedly asked them how much it would cost just to buy it back and get them out of there. You know, I, I'm sure there are criminals who are just as powerful now, but the fact that he was this powerful and this famous is incredible. Yeah, that doesn't exist. You can't be both. Anyway. No. Yeah, you got you got to pick one. If I'm you're sure a there's fam- plenty of oligarchs. Yeah, but in America, the cartel. What in the name name Chapo? Chapo still controls shit from prison. Yeah, but like if you're a famous but criminal, he's, first it's off, be- he's not in America. I mean, he's in prison. In he America, is in America, but he didn't operate in America. He was Mexican. Yeah. yeah, but he controls the border. I feel like now, if you're a famous criminal, you've been caught. Whereas, like, he was just like operating. He was just a just as free as he could be, and ever and everyone knew he was a criminal, which is. Yes, that's, that's power. All right, so who's the last one, Pablo? But but in the United States, that's yeah, what I'm Pablo had so much influence on the U.S. But he was not based. He was not America based. That's the difference. Like this guy is based in Manhattan. Bud Selig, <laughs> maybe crime boss. I. It's probably a casino owner. I would imagine some casino magnate. Oh, anybody in Vegas? Yeah, 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 yeah. That would be my guess. Uh, in 1921, Rothstein pulled off his greatest uh, sports gambling scandal that's confirmed. Uh, he o- secretly owned a racehorse named Sporting Blood. Uh, it was going to race in the 1921 Traverse Stakes in Saratoga, New York, to drive up the odds on Sporting Blood, uh, who was a popular racehorse, so it was going to get a lot of action. Uh, Rothstein uh, conspired with a trainer, uh, uh, Sam Hildreth. He was a trainer of Grey Leg, who was like the, one of the best horses in the country, so that Cause sporting blood, uh, sporting blood's odds to go up to three to one. They entered Gray Leg last minute, like the day of or the day before. So his odds rose. Rothstein put 150 grand on his horse uh, at three to one instead of probably even odds or maybe one and a half to one. Just before post time, without explanation, Gray Leg was scratched and Rothstein's horse won and uh, collected. <laughs> he collected over 500 grand. Gray Leg had a broken leg. <laughs> they never explained why. They're just like Gray Leg scratched. Became glue. A little sick, yeah. By the 1920s, uh, Rothstein basically ran the entire city of New York. His nicknames included The Brain, which is what he liked to be referred to as, Mr. Big, The Fixer, The Man Uptown, and The Big Bankroll. Uh, he was also <laughs> pretty high on his own supply in terms of intelligence. He once said there are two million fools and only one brainy man. So he was just like, I'm smarter than everybody. Which seems accurate, to be honest. He was just talking about a sack. He just had a really big... Wrinkly... The the thing, I mean, he had no reason to not be, like, he's it seem, seemingly gotten away with literally everything. Everything. Yeah. He's on a... He's he's heat-checking constantly. Yeah, he's like re- reverse Scooby-Doo villain. I would have gotten away for it. I would have gotten away with it, too, except I did. Yeah. Uh, he, was, he was also the mentor of several future, very famous New York crime bosses, including Lucky, Louis, uh, Lucky Luciano... Meyer Lansky, uh, Lansky uh, Frank Costello, mm-hmm. and Bugsy Siegel. Uh, Cannot wait to watch Boardwalk Empire again. This is getting me like super psyched. All, looped all, up. all those Boardwalk Empire characters. I can't imagine the sense well, though. It never does. You can't, it doesn't. It doesn't. You can't leave the business just retiring. Um, so Rossin began making money at one point simply by more or less being the kingpin uh, and running the entire city. And so he would settle disputes between rival gangs and be a go-between between you know, the government and the gangs, and, of course, he charged good money for that. His favorite, quote, office was Lindy's, the deli, at Broadway and 49th Street in Manhattan. Uh, he carried up to $100,000 in cash on him at any given time. He would have had zero problems with the tooth fairy. Yeah, yeah, right? <laughs> to, if anything, a kid would have been like, your jacket's he still walked very full. so <laughs> Floyd Mayweather could run with his million-dollar bag. <laughs> Uh, his wife wrote about him in a book that has since vanished from everywhere except the Library of Congress which I think is interesting. Uh, he often stood on the corner surrounded by bodyguards at Lindy's at the deli. Uh, he essentially, that's where he made bets, collected bets, did other kind of business dealings. His office was just the corner. He would be out there like a fucking postman. Rain, shine, snow. The weather did not matter. He was on the corner, on the street corner, doing biz- just standing there doing business constantly. Um, but on November 4th, 1928, his empire came suddenly crashing down. Rothstein was shot and wounded during a business meeting at Manhattan's Park Central Hotel on 7th Avenue near 55th Street. Uh, allegedly, Rothstein had lost 320 k in a three-day-long high-stakes poker game, but refused to pay because he thought the game was fixed. It's always a card game. Always takes down Bill. 
again, but like the refusing to pay, it's just the, I, when I, uh, on my, my podcast, like when I talk with like movies, like never, the, the number one rule in movies is never die for somebody else's money. The number two rule is like more often than not, don't die for your own money. Pay your yeah. debts. Yeah. Pay yeah. your, pay your debts. Don't die for your own money. Like you can always make it back and certainly never die for anyone else's money. No, no, never. So he did die for his own money, technically. Uh, according to the biographer of a noted gambler of the era who was in on the fix, his name was Titanic Thompson. I will be doing an episode of him because he's great in his own right. Uh, it was Thompson who fi- the, fixed the game against Rothstein. Um, essentially, Rothstein lo- actually lost most of his money based on a lot of complicated side bets. Uh, Rothstein ended up owing three hundred and nineteen grand to a different gambler who promised to pay most of that money to Thompson. Uh, he lost thirty grand to Thompson himself and about two hundred grand to other gamblers present. Um, Rothstein apparently also tried to stall in paying uh, the because at first I guess he was going to pay, but he was like, "I got to wait till some more cash comes in, I get more liquid." But good news, I have money on both Herbert Hoover winning the presidency in twenty eight and FDR winning the New York governorship, so like those bets are going to cash, and uh, I'll be able to pay you back. But alas. He was shot and killed, and the gambler George Hump McManus was arrested for the murder, but later acquitted due to a lack of evidence. Did did he owe McManus money? Uh, yes, McManus was one of the people at the game. McManus sounds like a goon, though. Hump? Yeah. His name is Hump. That Hump. also doesn't seem like a way to get paid. You're not, you're not getting your money back at that yeah, point. That's, that's Unless you know he carries 100 grand on him at all times, and you're going to just take, take that Take that, yeah. Take yeah. The, uh, Thompson testified, Titanic Thompson testified at McManus's trial, describing him as a swell loser who would never have shot Rothstein over money. Uh, Thompson later told some of his acquaintances that the killer had not been McManus, but his own bagman, Hyman Biller, who coincidentally went to live a nice life in Cuba right after Rothstein was murdered. Is that who Hyman Roth from Godfather 2 is based off? He's based on Rothstein, yeah. Rothstein. Uh, he's oh, named for Rothstein. Named for Rothstein. He's named for Rothstein, yeah. So maybe in fact, actually, there's a deleted scene I learned in The Godfather where the Hyman Roth character meets Vito Cor- young Vito Corleone uh, in Godfather 2 mm-hmm. and uh, is like, he he has like a very just old world Jewish mm-hmm. name, right? Like Schmoly Schmoly, <laughs> like just crazy ethnic sounding name. And Vito Corleone is like, you got to change it, like whatever. And he's like, well, who, who, what do you change it? Who do you admire? And he mentions, like, I admire Arnold Rothstein. And so he changes his name to Hyman Roth. Oh. So Hump takes him out, but his boy knows he's got a hundred grand on him at all times. Takes the cash, goes to Cuba, makes out, has a nice little life. Yeah, hundred grand in Cuba. That get you in 1928. Yeah, you're good to go. Yeah. Uh, another gangster biographer claims it was Dutch Schultz who murdered Rothstein. He says that was in retaliation for one of Schultz's friends. Of uh, the three names, I would prefer to be taken out by Dutch Schultz. It's just the best. Dutch Schultz is a good. Yeah. It's got the best ring to it. I don't want to get, again, I don't want to get taken out by a guy named Hump. Hump, yeah. <laughs> That's just bad optics. It's not. It's not good. Rothstein, for what it's worth, apparently knew who shot him, but never told anyone because he didn't die right away. He died two days later in the hospital. Mm. At Who, first, that's uh, what Cameron don't sn- no snitching. He didn't snitch. Yeah, no snitching. At first, when he was shot, he told his men, "Get me a taxi." And uh, when the cops came, because they came before the taxi came, they asked who did it, and he and Rossi said, "If I live, I'll tend to it. If I die, the gang will." <laughs> then he kept being interrogated in the hospital, and the police were like, "Arnold, we're your friends. You pay us. Who fucking shot you?" And he wouldn't tell him. He kept telling them in gangster talk, you stick to your trade, I'll stick to mine. And me mother did it. Just wouldn't say it. Wouldn't, wouldn't give it up. Uh, I kind of think the police should have arrested his mom. Live by the code, die by the code. Yeah. I, had to, uh, I had to confirm that that was the, uh, the rapper Cameron who was shot and then uh, refused to give up who shot him. Hell yeah. Yeah. I would give it up immediately, but I, I respect no, same. other yeah, people. I, would, I, I like 21 Savage, who took the murder weapon, or the, the weapon that was used to shoot him, and then murder that guy. That's sick, also. Yeah, that's pretty solid. Mm-hmm. Uh, but that bloke, I have, I the lad, 21 Savage. That. That is, that's all I got today. Arnold Rothstein died two days after he was shot. His empire was divided up amongst his lackeys and cronies and rivals. Uh, and then in the 30s, to a some extent, um, LaGuard- the mayor, uh, Fiorella LaGuardia, 
was elected in New York, and he kind of cracked down on organized crime and had a horrible airport named after him. Um, but, yeah, Arnold Rothstein died uh, in, in 28, uh, relatively young, in his 50s, I think, 40s, probably 40s. Um, but, yeah, that's all I got. What did you guys uh, learn today? Um, I got some excellent context uh, for next time I watch Boardwalk Empire. Yeah. I don't, I don't think this, like, it, it, in case if you're listening or watching, like, if – if I haven't conveyed this enough, I highly recommend Boardwalk Empire. I think at this time, at this point, like underrated. Doesn't I, get talked yes, about enough. Hundred percent. I think it suffered from being in a sort of um, lull, HBO lull. Mm-hmm. Uh, post Sopranos. Post Sopranos, yes. po- and it was post Deadwood, and it was before Game of Thrones. Mm-hmm. So like that was at that time. This is what's funny too, because this is a sick time on HBO. Like. True Blood before the fifth season was fantastic, mm. and Boardwalk Empire was fucking fantastic, and like th- people were like, "Oh, does HBO even have any good shows anymore?" I think Boardwalk Empire gets punished for not being as good as The Wire, Sopranos, which is fine because like very few shows are, right. and also got punished for because it, it uh, Martin Scorsese was like attached to it. I think he directed mm-hmm. the pilot and, and he yeah. produced it. And I think it like it gets lobbed up into expectations of like it needs to be like Goodfellas or it, need, right, it needs to be something. At the and same it, time, like, though, probably way more watchable than The Wire. Yeah, because a lot of people it's hard to get into. But with also, an absolutely excellent period piece. Yeah, for yeah. sure. It's it's like I I enjoyed a lot. Um, I think season two is like fucking dynamite. Um, and then um, Bobby Cannavale in season three is I'm pretty sure he won an Emmy for it. He's an incredible villain in that one. Um, I will say Rothstein, from what I've seen in the show, a bit more um, sophisticated as a person. Seems very like measured. Yeah, very doesn't seem very flamboyant at all. Like it, the character is very much like doesn't like people knowing his business and like seems he, very. And know, this he, guy, he this guy seems a little of, more uh, a little bit of, like Gus Fring. Oh yeah, where Gus Fring is like, I I am just your I am just a chicken salesman. Yeah, like he's very smart, very mm-hmm. quiet. And Rothstein does not appear to have been that way at no, all. No, seems like. boy little, did that this actor seems a little get, more bombastic. What that, that actor got pretty uh, stereotyped with every role he has now moving forward. He's yeah. in the uh, gentleman, G- Giancarlo Esposito. Yeah, he's yeah. in the yeah. gentleman as essentially like a drug kingpin. Same oh, character. Yeah. yeah, he is that way and everything. What did you learn today? I learned that I have a man to model my life after. <laughs> Pat Burrell. Yeah, Pat Burrell. Of course. <laughs> yes. Yeah. Yes. Let's name dudes. <laughs> Let's finish it off by name a dudes. Uh, well, uh, w- name a dude as in whose whose dude is today's Hitler? I'm not gonna go with the obvious. It's gonna be Hump. I'm I'm accusing Hump of not only murdering our boy here, but just having bad Brandon. Yeah, I can't. There's no way that was a good nickname even then. You know, some things yeah. are lost to history, sort of lost to the translation of time. But I bet Hump, he had I Hump has, has like never, a broken back. It, it's never been a good thing. It c- can't have been. Never been a good thing. I'm just imagining the 1920s version of the humpback from 300. Yeah. Yeah. That's who got him. Yeah. Sad. That's who got Leonidas, too. Kind of. Mm. Yeah. Yeah. The I the think. information led to it. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, who's today's... I don't know if you know. Today's Hitler means today's a villain. Because in, in history, everyone just likes to bring up Hitler immediately. You know what? Uh, Arnold Rothstein's dad for not supporting his marriage. It's fair. I I think that's a um, I think that's a bad reason. I, I don't know that it would have changed anything in Arnold's I, life. I don't I don't yeah I don't I don't think so either. But <laughs> honestly, I'm you know I, I believe that like you know sometimes like kids kids are going to be their own people. But if you raise one of the most notorious criminals this world has ever seen, this country has ever seen, yeah, you probably did something. He is literally on the Mount Rushmore of of, of organized crime in the United States. Like, yeah, yeah, you should get a little credit as a father. We've like for as much as we've like maligned like like Marv Marinovich yeah. for how his kid turned out, like I think Arnold Rothstein's father probably deserves some blame. It's probably it's not great if you're just a dick. Give him a little more attention. Yeah, you can't just lavish all the pr- praise on Harry. Yeah, no, yeah, exactly. The world didn't need another rabbi. Yeah, well, he wasn't gonna. There wouldn't be two. Oh, you're saying Harry wasn't that special? Mm-mm. Yeah, I mean that's fair. Just what? what you just going into? You can be a priest. You can be a rabbi. Whatever. Who cares? Arnold was did the big. There's thing. only one Arnold. Yeah, they, truly. Um, he, I mean, he made a name for himself in this world. We're talking about him now. Not talking about his bitch ass brother. No, no. Just a footnote. He's in zero movies. None. The brother. <laughs> uh, that is all I got for today. One more time. 
Kyle's movie or Kyle's book, rather. I'm sorry, is movies with balls. Where can they find this, Kyle? Uh, it is available for pre-order everywhere books are sold. Uh, that's Amazon. That's Barnes and Noble. That's Bookshop.org, which will buy a book from a local used bookstore. Um, and for pre-orders, if you DM me on Twitter or you uh, email me Kyle.Banduho at Gmail, uh, I will send a signed book plate and a movies with ball sticker for the proof of pre-order. Where can they find you? What are your What are your Instagram, Twitter? Uh, I am on Twitter at Kyle Banduho, uh, and then uh, Big Screen Sports, the sports movie podcast. It comes out to you every Monday. We're right in the middle of recapping uh, Shorzy season one. Have you guys watched Shorzy? I have seen Shorzy. Love Shorzy. Yeah. Not as hockey? good as Letter Kenny. Hockey. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's so I, I hadn't seen Letter, Letter Kenny. Kenny. So I will say Letter Kenny is not like you don't have to have seen Letter Kenny to appreciate Shorzy. But, but it's yeah. a character based off yeah, Letter Kenny. Based on a it's a yeah, character from Letter Kenny. Uh, so yeah, we're, we're recapping Shorzy and then, uh, yeah, we do movies and the premise now is all movies are sports movies. So we have tackled, uh, just, just about everything. So, and then if you're a baseball fan, uh, from Phenom to the farm, that's an interview series that's presented by baseball America. Um, we're kind of named some guys actually. Yeah. So it's a real name. Some guys. Talk to some guys. Talk to some guys. Talk to some guys. Talk to Paul Skeens. I have not talked. Getting to Paul Skeens is very hard right now. Very Very in demand. It's typically guys who are retired. (laughs) Yeah, Kyle is a prolific podcaster. Um, the Baseball America one's super cool. He talks to a lot of. Uh, the, I've been on the sports one a couple times. Yes. Have you been on the sports movie one as well? No, we'll I've have been to change on his that. original podcast, which was uh, Dad. Dad Gum. Dad Gum. Yeah, right. yeah, 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 yeah. yeah, I was given back. fatherly advice when I was 28. With did no you win kids. the father competition with Jake? I, can't I did. Remember. Yeah. yeah. Okay, cool. I've never lost a competition on this podcast. I don't want to talk about that. Um, <laughs> I'm a better Catholic. I'm a better father. Well, not than me, but than Jake, yes. I'm probably a better father than you, too. Because there's the only one way to find out. We have to. you got to raise Rob's raise kids. children for a while. Yeah. yeah, I will. A year with In Dan. In spite of you. Then a year back with Rob, and then you kind of. Then we figure it out. They're yeah. going to be beefier. Fucked up. They're yeah. going to start lifting at, like, two. Sweet. You give me Finn. I'll, I'll take care of Finn. Okay. Uh, you can have Bitch Ash Rory, and we'll compare. Mm-hmm. Okay. Sounds good. I mean, Finn's the harder uh, uh, harder project. He's, like, 50th percentile. Rory's, like, 90th and everything. Yeah, because Sidewise. you ignore your kid because he's the second born. He's the middle child. Yeah, I keep finding Finn standing over Rory's bed with a knife. It's <laughs> fucked. Uh, I'm going to raise him to be this guy. To be our Rostein. <laughs> our Rostein. Yeah, sounds right, to be honest. Uh, but anyway, that is all I got, Kyle. Thank you so much for joining us. Again, uh, patreon.com slash softcore history. Leave a review on Apple. Like it on Spotify. Five stars. You know the deal. Uh, for Dan Register and Kyle Banduho, I'm Rob Fox. You just got soft served. <laughs>